So we carry on with our explanation for chapter three, uh, railway traction systems, and we have reached section five. We will be talking about AC and DC machines. Uh, we'll be talking about some of the requirements for uh, a traction motor and what are the design requirements for a traction motor. While this, in this section, you would be really need to uh, look at this topic in more details and you need to try to find further information on some of the topics that I will mention. So without further ado, let's start. So uh, let's start from the beginning of the chapter. And here we go. So we will be discussing requirements for railway traction. What are the requirements for a good railway traction and what are what are the requirements for a traction motor, but are what are the requirements for designing a traction motor? Uh, induction motor and three-phase power supply. Also, we'll be talking about DC machines. So there is an AC machine and DC machine and induction motor is an AC machine. Also, we'll be talking about traction motor. So what are, so you can see this is a motor here. Uh, here it's hiding in the, in the case, the traction motor and it's connected with a motor connection box links to, uh, to, uh, to qu links connecting quill to wheel so this will eventually be linking uh, be linked to the wheel or to the axle and here you can see the bogey so these are <laughs> the most expensive parts in any train uh, not not necessarily but definitely they are the most important because they are responsible for the movement so what are the requirements for railway traction you would need a good a good torque performance you need that torque and by torque we means this rotational movement if you are not familiar with the word torque so we need good torque performance we we need it to be robust and reliable Something can stay for the long uh, journeys. Efficient, not to consume a lot of energy, energy. Compatible with other equipments like bogies, axles, and uh, others. Used for braking, can be used for braking. Low maintenance, low cost. You can control the speed and it should be quiet. This will be the perfect kind of, or the standard requirements for any railway traction motor. So we'll be looking at the AC induction motor and we have talked before about the induction motor. We have talked about the, uh, the stator and the armature and the armature is the, uh, is the part that's responsible for making the rotational movement. And here the current is coming on three phases to the stator to create a magnetic field which, trans which result in a rotational movement in the uh, 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 in the armature, or, 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 or yeah, in the armature. So the stator gets the magnet, gets current. It has a magnetic field. The magnetic field is transferred to the armature, and it's three-phase supply: first wire, second wire, th uh, third wire, and each phase has a 120 angle between each other. So that this is the first line, the second line, and the third line. So this is first phase, second phase, and three phase. Few notes, the induction motor is like a transformer with rotating secondary, uh, max induced rotor voltage is standstill. So the, uh, you should be thinking about what is the voltage that is uh, created. And you this part, you really need to look at this in more details. What are the voltage that we are creating and uh, how we can, calculate that. So the maximum and minimum voltage introduced in the rotor is important and you need to look at this in more details. So we need to look at torque versus speed characteristics and this is the torque, the torque in the braking region and this is the speed. So the speed is below zero. This is the braking region, the, the speed is decelerating. So the, the torque is, is stable. There is no rotational movement. And while now we have um, the motoring re region where the train starts moving, the torque starts increasing. And this is the motoring region and the torque starts increasing. And now you are on uphill or you can depend on gradient and you don't need the motor power anymore. So you release the motor and you have this reverse movement until you reach the generative braking, but the speed continues to increase because you are using the gravity force and now instead of using energy you are generating energy 
So this is the generative braking region. This is the motoring region. This is the braking region. What the torque is constant in the braking region. The torque is increasing in the uh, uh, in the motoring region, and the uh, torque is being reversed in the generating region. This is what you really need to remember between the torque and the speed characteristics in the three regions, braking, motoring, and generating. Now we'll be talking about DC machines and DC machines are different than AC machines. That the, the, the armature is excited in a different ways. And there are three ways for uh, AC, for armature DC machine excitement. Uh, so this is the DC machine. It can be separately excited, but it's not common. Self-excited or series uh, excited and shunt excited. And this is the difference between speed and torque between each. And by the speed, I think we talk about the speed of voltage or, or that. Uh, but you need to know there are different relations that result in the torque performance. If it was differential excited, shunt excited, cumulative excited, or series excited. So what uh, the current, so th let me talk about the mechanism. The current is pivoted coil will set up a field, magnetic field, which will try to align itself with a stationary field, thus producing torque, which will result in that rotational movement. Induced voltage is in the armature. Now the voltage that is created here in the armature, rotating at fixed speed E is proportional to flux. And you need to look at this in more details similar to how the, what is the voltage induced in the AC motors, what is the voltage uh, induced in, uh, in DC uh, motors. But the, the three methods of excitations are series, shunt, separate, and you can consider uh, that, that uh, series, shunt, and separate, or self-excited. Uh, so now about traction motors, they have traditionally been series excited, they have a high starting torque, better load sharing between different motors in a car. Several factors limit their use, current rating, saturation, or magnetic circuit. The, these are some of the limitations. Now we need to talk about traction design requirements. We talked what we need in a traction motor in the beginning, the first part, robust, reliable, efficient, a good torque performance. But we also need that the torque can be controlled by uh, torque controlled the drives. Electrical design of a traction drive should cope with minus 30 to plus 20 input voltage variation. Torque demand may vary according to driver action, regulation of trans speed, uh, train speed, following a predetermined braking trajectory and wheel slip and wheel slide control. Now you have a clear understanding of requirements What's an induction motor? What's a DC motor? How it's uh, uh, how it's excited? How both of them are, are excited? What are the torque uh, speed uh, relation? And what are the different regions? And we end with this part, and it's about the tractive effort. And this is the speed. So the tractive effort in region one is have a constant relation with the weight. Then, uh, as the speed increase, it has a proportional uh, relation with one divided by the weight, and as the speed increase, it has a, a proportional relation with one over W square, weight, the, the weight square. So as the speed increase, the weight of the region have less impact on the attractive effort. The power, also the power increase with the speed in a steady state if you have constant torque and brake, but sometimes uh, there are electrical power. So you need to look at those relations, the mathematical relation, the voltage, how the voltage induced in induction motor, how the voltage in, in, induced in uh, uh, DC motors or DC machines, and what is their relation between power and speed in, in more details. This was a quick introduction that just give you, there will be relation, there will be mathematical relation between torque, uh, torque and speeds, and you need to look at this in more details and to read more about this. This was a quick introduction about traction and railway systems. And this is a very important lecture that gave you that insights on traction and traction motors, AC, AC machines, DC machines, the relationships, and what are the requirements. 
we'll, we, we hope that you uh, go back and read more about these in details, especially if you are an electrical engineering graduate or if you are keen on having a master's degree specializing in uh, AC DC machines, this is an important uh, start, but you really need to build on this knowledge. Have a great evening and we'll see you in the next lecture.